Welcome, everybody. Um, uh, this is an exciting venture that, um, uh, that we, well, we're all excited by th this venture. We hope, that we hope you will be, be too. Um, it's something um, quite new for, for, for us in, in many ways and, and in other ways, actually, um, just a continuation of some of the most interesting things we've been doing before. But um, th for anyone that doesn't know me, I'm David Clutterbuck. I describe myself as a compulsive scribbler, um, constantly writing yet, yet another book and doing some more research. Um, but I've been fascinated for decades in this concept of wisdom as a key component to um, uh, of of human human endeavor, human human achievement, um, and I'm going to introduce uh, one by one my my my, my colleagues um, who will be uh, joining us uh, or joining me um, in leading this this uh, th this um, adventure in the Maasai Mara. Um, so, do me, do would, would you like to introduce yourself very briefly? Yes, thank you, David, and thank you, and welcome. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. This is a collective effort, and we do this together. So my name is Dumisani Makadlela. I am in Johannesburg, South Africa. But, uh, I live anywhere I choose. The whole planet is my home. And I don't respect and recognize geography as defined by humans. I think it's limiting. And we all have wisdom that we haven't tapped into. And we're going to tap into some of it in Kenya in June. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Dalton. Good morning. My name is Dalton. Dalton Grozo from, from the Netherlands, but I've been on the African continent for the last uh, nine years. Uh, Kenya first, and the last six years in uh, Rwanda. So I'm speaking to you from Kigali, beautiful place. And I'm also excited. I've been collaborating with uh, with Anthony for the last few years and have had the pleasure to spend quite a bit of time with the Maasai in my time in Kenya and uh, over the last few months as well. And I, I'm excited for, for all of us, uh, all the time we can spend in different places to reflect on ourselves and on what life means and on what's important. I think that's always good use time. So thank you. Looking forward to hear your questions and share more. And Anthony. Thank you very much, David. Yeah, it's it's great to be here and uh, people who travel with me as well, Valerie. Lovely seeing you too. Thank you. Uh, yeah, where we're going in Kenya, I'll be sharing a few photographs, but it's really close to that 42 years ago, 43 years ago that I was on the on a 21 day camel safari and I just saw the Maasai and I just saw this incredible sense of presence, identity and purpose. And it's really been the last 40 years is trying to work out for myself, what is my identity, my purpose and my ideas and how can we make it relevant to everybody in a way that respects and honors where everybody came from. So that is really my my goal and how do we pull it together with no preconceived ideas or anything it's just is there a different and a better way of looking at wealth wisdom identity whatever those words are that seem to be driving us all at the moment to to, to question everything thank thank you anthony so a little bit about the origins of this this uh, this adventure um uh, I bumped into or met Ant Anthony at an EMCC conference uh, a few years ago um, um, and realized he was a kin kindred spirit, somebody who was who'd also uh, enjoyed um, being um, in, in out of the way places, listening to and en engaging with different with different cultures um, and uh I, I, and particularly remote places. And uh, I re recall with great fondness um uh one for my fiftieth birthday, tramping the hills of of of, 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 of of Nepal or the mountains of, of Nepal with a bunch of coaches, uh, uh, and uh, we came up with a collective noun, a cacophony of coaches, uh, as 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 a result of that. But the conversa the critical thing was the conversations that we had, um, and um, you know, occasionally you'd get breathless um, and you'd you'd stop and you'd talk, but 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 you the Walking together, um, talking together, and then sitting down over, around the campfire, um, 
these are the places where we were able to explore things we didn't have time to explore in our normal daily lives. And that's what we what we want to create um, in this adventure in June. We, we, want, we, we want to create a space where people can um, reflect on their own evolution as human as human beings um, and look at their own practice um, as coaches or as leaders and to think about how they put that into context for the next the coming decade or more. Um, and so it's an opportunity to regroup, recalibrate, um, and tap into wisdom <clears throat> that you perhaps didn't even know you had. Um, uh, and for me, uh, this 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 concept of, of, of wisdom, um, I, I, I've been known to say that the, the, the key to growing truly wise is, as we get older, is to rediscover the curiosity and the wonder of the child of our childhood. Um, and we re rediscover them by remembering how we lost them. And for me, that that's a you know, that that's a good starting point. So creating the, the opportunity to giving ourselves permission to have uh, have conversations with our inner, inner child, for example. Um, and what we learned from all this, the, from, from, from the, 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 these previous adventures was that actually the conversation creates the agenda, not we don't start with an agenda that creates a conversation. Um, and that's something that we found increasingly um, very mature in our work with the Coach, Mat Coach Maturity Research Group. That actually that 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 works well with the the higher levels of 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 coaching. Now we are less focused on the agenda and more on the conversation, and the agenda creates itself. Um, so um, we've been looking that, that there is research around wisdom, uh, and we'll we'll be talking a little bit about the the, the components of wisdom. Um, there's what there's one particular um, 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 guy called Jeste uh, J E S T E who's done some lovely research and identified different components of wisdom. So we'll, we'll use some of those as, as, as background, but we're not going to get hung up on research or hung up on theory. Um, the conversations that happen is are the conversations that need to happen. Um, when we look at mentoring, mentoring is rooted in wisdom. The goddess Athena, the, the original mentor was the goddess Athena, the goddess of wisdom. Um, and so we see, and we see a continuity all the way through the development of concepts of mentoring, and then out of mentoring coaching, um, and so um, and, and indeed leadership, because the first leadership book um, in in Europe was um, was a continuation of the dialogues of Athena with the, the with Telemachus, the son of Odysseus, um, done by a French cleric, um, um, and. Uh, and, and this, I say the first, the first leadership book. If, if you if you discount Machiavelli, uh, because he came a little bit earlier, um, but 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 you know, so the traditions here that we can tap into. There's a lot of there's a lot of connections, and, and wisdom is 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 often about making connections that haven't been made before. I'm going to admit, you know, there we go. Um, so um, the impact of, of tapping into somebody else's wisdom is not what you take from them, but it's the revealing of the wisdom that you didn't know you had yourself. So it's so not it's not listening to somebody else preaching about how to do things. It's about self-discovery. Um, and very often the real insights that happen don't happen during the conversations that people have. They happen in the spaces between them. So these are some of the observations around this. It's also about being in a place that stimulates um, surprise and wonder. And the choice of this wonderful venue is it's a, it's a place where we can actually um, be within nature, see things, be surprised and, 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 one, and, 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 um, and have that sense of joy that comes, that breaks us, takes us back to childhood emotions, which we can then build upon. Um, the, the, what happens then, once we have a surprise, the unconscious brain works away at making sense of this. And, and, and in our normal working environments, that we, we lose the space to do that because then we're on to do something else. In this environment, we have the opportunity to actually allow that process to happen. And so we're going to try and create an environment where you can hitch a ride 
on the wisdom of others to enhance and explore your own wisdom. Um, it, it's not just about listening to other people. It's about feeling listened to yourself. Which is a luxury we very often don't have in the modern, modern working environment. Um, when we feel truly listened to, it's so much easier to express thoughts out loud. So we become more aware of what we're saying and more open to seeing the implications of this. Something um, that struck me many years, years ago that, that um, really made me rethink was how do I know what I think, what I think until I've said it? Um, and we have a chance to have these conversations and actually uh, and explore what we think by saying it. So um, that's that, that's my sort of preamble to this. Um, it's meant to be, the one thing I should say, it should be immense fun. Um, uh, because believe it or not, all, all of these guys have a great sense of humour. And on that on that note, um, I'm going to pass over to uh, to Dumi to um, just, just put, to carry on. Yeah. Thank you, David. Thank you. It's a very beautiful setting of what we're, we're doing here. We're talking about uh, putting together a gathering where we, we commune, we connect, we fellowship as fellow humans. And I, I love how you put that, David, tapping into uh, wisdom and hitching a ride on others' uh, wisdoms. I love that. And, and the metaphor to stretch it further, so you're hitching a ride in someone's train and then discovering along the journey that you're actually a co-train driver yourself. And then you realize that, oh, you actually do own the train too. We're together on this journey. And it's fascinating to, when we, when we open up to that, what can the world learn or tap into different parts of it that are maybe not in the forefront. So who, who are we really? And my piece in this and, and what I just to build on from what David said is when we talk about Ubuntu, which is really the essence of humaneness of who we are, uh, the core of that is understanding that we're connected. And David is talking about uh, recognizing those connections or working with the connections in between. He's taking the whole system work. And I don't want to make this abstract and theoretical and the rest of that, but just to bring it home, like what we're doing with this is coming back home to who we are, humane beings, human with an E. So I will take a piece of wisdom from, say, the southern part of the African continent of home to every single one of us. It's every scientific discovery that has been done or research has shown that we all come from this part of the world. So it's really coming back home in so many ways. Where did humanity come from? What does science tell us? What does that mean? The energy that many people feel or, or share after they've gone to different parts. It's almost like what a doubt in us, you know, we talk about who we are. You're in Rwanda. I'm not sure where everyone else is. I'm looking forward to hearing where you are. We put our roots somewhere. But what Ubuntu says is, wherever you are, you are connected to someone at the other end of the planet. There is a connection somewhere. This is why we recognize humanity or humaneness when we see it. And when we see the opposite, we also feel something that makes us respond or react to that. It's a wisdom of humanity that we haven't tapped into that much. Our humaneness is alive in us. So there are a few things around Ubuntu that I'm going to share that say, it's not just saying I am, I am because we are. 
Ubuntu is saying that I can't be fully me if you cannot be fully you. And if we don't see each other, really we will struggle to learn from each other what David was talking to. So the concept of seeing, not with your eyes, but with your heart, with your being, connecting to another, is what Ubuntu is about. It's a reminder of who we are. And it's, it's imploring us to reconnect, to remember who we are, interconnected beings. There's too much separation. There's too much fragmentation. There's too much disconnection in spite of the technology. And what we'll do here with this is tap into that wisdom, which is on the ground back home. And so seeing ourselves and then seeing others, and then most importantly, I'll, re I'll end with this and invite uh, Anthony to come in there. So seeing ourselves, seeing others, and then seeing ourselves in everyone else, and then hitching a ride. Thank you, Dave, for that metaphor. I love it. And coming back home within ourselves on the right to better humanity tapping into all wisdoms plural Anthony thank you very much indeed yeah it, it really is a an honor and a pleasure exploring these ideas and Valerie has been with me we'll be talking a little bit more about there and uh, just yeah, and I remember when we met up with Emmanuel when he came for the AIA launch in um, in Hong Kong, and you know the conversations we had, and it's it's really just trying to find a platform for conversations. And if I just tell a little bit of the story of how this evolved and, and the sort of relationship I have with Eric, because I think it's important that it, it's not really just hey we're turning up in a village. These are people who have who I've known who've stayed with me for you know, 20 years. And I'd just like to show some photographs. Actually, this is, uh, uh, there, there is Valerie. Do you remember that moment, Valerie? Yeah, there is Valerie. Sorry, I was on mute there, Anthony. Yes, I certainly do. I do. <laughs> yeah, and there's Doubtson. So we're going back to a community that I have really known for the last 40 years in that area, and that's sort of the relationship. A little bit about what, what myself is. I wrote a book 40 years ago on, you know, in search of inspiration. I just believe the greatest opportunity and challenge in my life is the freedom of choice to shape my own destiny. And really, what I've spent my life doing is, is trying to see what I need to understand about myself, the laws of Mother Nature and human nature, if I want to have a sense of identity without all of the support systems that our ancestors uh, supported themselves on or, or had naturally. So these are some of the places in the world where I have gone and traveled and, and sat down with people. I'm not an anthropologist. I'm not a scientist. I left school at 18. Uh, and I just wanted to go and explore what is important in people's lives. And is there another way of really looking at things? And just showing some brief photographs in the 70s. All I wanted was a bigger gold Rolex in my father. And sort of by the end of it, I got it. My girlfriend told me to get lost and I've never, ever been more miserable in my life. So I sort of realized the gold Rolex doesn't necessarily do it. And then I went on this camel safari and that is about 50 miles north of where we'll be for 21 days. And I sort of became fascinated when I saw the Maasai, because I saw they had presence, they had identity, they they didn't need anything to say what they were, they didn't have to say anything, they just had to be. And I thought, what does it mean just to be? So there I am in Papua New Guinea. And it really sort of took me sort of a fascinated idea as to what is it that we need to do to really feel we've earned our seat at the table? What do we have to hand out? What do we have to have earned that respect? And this is still my curiosity. I really haven't got the answers yet. But this is Joseph Nombre, who invited me to Papua New Guinea. And when I got back from New Guinea, this is back in 1981, I said, sir, what is the most important thing in your life? And he just drew this map of his territory. And he said, I know my duty, therefore I know my aims and ambitions. 
And it's really taken me 40 years to try to understand what is it that we're trying to protect? What is it? And how can we find out what that really means? And that's why a lot of my work has been in Papua New Guinea and in Mongolia and elsewhere. And what I've discovered is that in Papua New Guinea or Kenya, everybody has a map. And then if you're head of a company, if you have a map, all you need is wisdom. And this is Eric, who you'll be meeting in London, who is in London, working with people. He's been to America as well. So these maps help provide conversations. But what they really started to realize in organizations, it's not the team building, it's to have a good conversation. So I've got maps from Papua New Guinea and elsewhere. And I decided to go and see what maps would they draw in Kenya. This is back in 2001. So I had these photographs from the 1980s going looking for what, what, could, what could we do. And we got fantastically lost. Um, and eventually we found a lodge. And you can see the lodge at the bottom left-hand corner. And that chap is called Tom Sylvester. And he said, down there, there is a man I would love to introduce you to. And his name is Eric Olekasana. And we found the people we were looking for. And we could then ask them and Eric about what is your territory? What is important? And this has really been the journey that Eric and myself have been on together, whether it's in London or in his village. And this is not anthropology. It is just sitting down with people, talking to them, enjoying one's friendliness with them. And this is uh, Eric, who you'll be meeting uh, at the bottom left. There's my son now. When he was nine, he's now 32, 31. So it's this sort of family friendship that I want to explain that we're going into. People who have known me, people who have stayed with me. And this is Eric uh, in December. And then these are some of the photographs. It is really a combination of conversation. As David was saying, it's not around structure. It's about looking about, so what are values? What is identity? What is purpose? What do other things really mean? to let people talk to each other. And that is whether it's internally uh, with, with us or more importantly in the evenings, talking to the Maasai and having conversations. And maybe Valerie, you can say a little bit about what, how you found it sort of talking and these conversations. Um, you mentioned earlier about coming home and it really was like coming home. Um, in fact, I was reflecting on it yesterday and I was asked to, to remember a time when I felt really happy and really comfortable with myself. And the first memory, you know, you were invited to think about your whole life. And the first thing that came to mind was our our trip to Kenya and sitting in the evening around a campfire um, and looking at the, the sky like like you could never even imagine a sky would look like and just feeling content, but also um with the Maasai, thankfully, a lot of them speak English and speak English very well. So it was easy to communicate. They were very open about their culture, about the things that they're trying to change, about the things that they're trying to keep. Um, and they also have a fantastic sense of humor. <laughs> I, I can't contribute without saying that. They're, they're, they're just the loveliest people to spend time with. Thanks, Valerie. Um and it's a combination. I mean, maybe Dowson, you could also just talk a little bit about sort of how we, how the mingling of the conversations, and uh, just there you are talking about education to the teacher. Yes, it's you know, we'll, when we'll be spending time with them, there, it, it, it. Uh, <laughs> How can I say it? It's, it's just a matter of curiosity and asking questions and um, realizing that you're all human beings having grown up in a different way. Um, but it, and it's interesting also to hear what questions they might have for you or for us. And it's it's lovely to to interact and be together and realize even though you live in such a different way, 
it's almost more interesting to see how how many things are the same and what's important in life and <clears throat> what people value. And so that's uh, that's just a wonderful uh, realization and experience. Yeah. And then, as I say, we use the maps, which we will be doing, so they can explain their worlds and we can explain theirs. We're in the most gorgeous setting. Um, we're under these rocks. Uh, you can see the breakfast table and the other camp table. And it's quite a nice place, isn't it, Valerie? Oh, it's magnificent. My 15-year-old daughter came um, came with us and I, I took her to school this morning and I mentioned they'd be coming on this call and she said, oh, mom. She actually said it's the happiest she's been in her whole life when she was there. And this is a young girl who who suffers a lot with anxiety and and um you know she has she has social phobia she got she got kind of caught in a difficult part of the covid um experience that we had and yet I've never seen her so alive or so happy when she was in this place it was just magnificent and obviously there is the wildlife uh we'll be stopped staying the first few days in a park where there are lots of it but these are the sort of tents, very comfortable, that, that we'll be staying in with showers and loos in the background. But the main thing is just really the, the, the conversations that, that people can have. And I think, as, as David said, it is, it's unstructured conversations. We want to have a framework, but more importantly, we just want to let people move, spend, go for walks in the morning. I think, Valerie, you went for some walks with... Eric and some of the others, and and just to talk and and, and have those different communications. I, I don't know whether Dumi or or uh, David would like to say something before I hand over to Dowson. Maybe before David comes in, just to build on that, Anthony, thank you for that. It's it's uh, in my culture, Zulu. It's uh, elders like you are wisdom keepers. So your experience from around the world. And sharing it in this context, Anthony, is uh, that sacred space. Mm. So we've got to guard and protect that. So you, David, and other elders, I'm looking at who oh, has gray hair here. Sorry, Ruben. <laughs> you, have gray hair. you know, and that's the, the work around tapping into that wisdom, life experiences and others. And others are, are groomed and born into that. So people like Eric and their exposure to that and tipping into it, the way you described there, Anthony, it's beautiful. So for me personally, I can't wait to be in that space because that's, that's sacred ground when you gather around the fire or in any other form and you connect with each other in that spirit of just engaging with each other and, and sharing. So just wanted to say for me, it's a, we've got to go out there and tell everybody about this. We've got to bring as many people as we can. Uh, uh, we're not marketing yet, but I just couldn't help it. I'm sure one of the conversations that we'll have, I'm sure one of the conversations we, that we'll, we'll get into <coughs> is 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 the, the the different roles for leaders. Uh, so that the leader is chief or the leader is leader is shaman, and the difference and and and, and the and and the, the the difference in perspective that those two roles have, um, and. And the importance for to, for for in creating wise leaders for them to be able to be both to have both of those roles. Um, yeah, I mean, on that one, I'll never forget sitting around with a group of leaders in uh, around the fire with some elders in Kenya. They just, where I said, "So who is the leader here?" They just looked at me bemused and said. What's the problem you're trying to solve? We're all leaders. If you can tell us the problem, we'll tell you who would be most appropriate for, for solving it. And it was just a sort of natural. And I remember in, uh, in Papua New Guinea, uh, with, uh, when Joseph Nombre, the ambassador, was over in England once, a chap called David, uh, Dan Dennison said to him, so how do you choose their, your leaders? He just says, well, we sort of watch who people naturally follow. 
<laughs> you can sort of see it. It's not the skill. It's just a sort of natural humility. And I think it's just, just this really simple, simple things you hear. You go, yeah, that's pretty obvious. Yes. Well, I, some, one of my colleagues did quite a lot of work in um, with the Maoris. And I, I'm, I'm actually a, a, an honorary Maori. Um, uh, I was yeah. adopted from the Maori community about so many years ago. Um, and um, the... Um, when the, when they were looking at <clears throat> leadership um, and why why were there so few people from the Maori communities in the leadership structures of um, of New Zealand rugby, <clears throat> and it was because it that's not the way that we structure leadership. It didn't fit with the culture, <clears throat> um, so a different way of looking at things. Yeah. But Godson, let, let's bring you in to talk about some of the the, the, the specifics. Yeah. Yeah, so so many beautiful things have been already said. Um, I, I'd like to maybe share also a little bit what brings me into this uh, amazing group of people, uh, and maybe one one story that just came to mind. Uh, I think one of my earliest memories in life that might have been a little seed as to why I got curious and and left uh, left my northern province of the Netherlands. I remember being a, a young girl in primary school in, in class, sitting in a religion that was religion class, and having been brought up as a, as a Christian, uh, I think the teacher was talking about how many billions of people had this religion, so many billions of people were following that religion. And I have this memory of realizing, like, okay, so either we are wrong, or they are wrong, or maybe we're all right, or maybe <clears throat> nothing of this is, is there's maybe not one truth. And I think it was a quite, quite profound um, realization as a girl in that moment and, and make, made, me, made me curious about um, what is true in, 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 the, in, in the eyes of which perspective. And, and uh, I think at the, when I was in my 30s and, and when I wasn't feeling so comfortable in the way that success seemed to be defined in in my society i i just needed to experience a different kind of system uh, in order to kind of rebuild or build up or find some some of my own definitions of that and i think um it helped massively to meet anthony on that path i think many People uh, whom, whose life he crosses uh, is impacted by it, and so definitely it was also mine. This happened in uh, Japan in 2015, and it was such a breath of fresh air to hear him speak about what's important in life, about leadership, about um, yeah, about what about having fun as well and um, we kept in contact I moved on to the African continent and I started working with a small team that he had started years ago in, uh, in Kenya and I started working with some of the methodologies met the people that have impacted him and uh, I brought my own uh, coaching and NLP background to to that mix and together over the last few years we've collaborated quite closely in in Kind of exploring and offering these beautiful concepts to whoever is interested and always kind of telling each other like we also don't have we're not the wise people we don't have the truth but let's offer this to see what reflections uh, it can uh, bring forth and um and and so it means basically that we love enabling meaningful conversation and that we feel sometimes that we're in a, we we feel like we, we we're playing in that inspiration business, and it's like, a, and it's it's a true privilege and a pleasure. Um, when you're coming with us, um, as as David said, like the conversation will spark the agenda. Uh, I love that. I love that. And there's also things that we can bring to the table to help even spark that conversation. <laughs> And uh, there's there's a masterclass that Anthony and I uh, put together that um, that uses some of these concepts over the the decades of of work that Anthony has done that around that that evolves or that started with that story with Joseph Nombri about knowing your territory. So there's a methodology that came out of that drawing a map and reflecting on your life from the perspective of a map and a territory. 
But there's so many other kind of simple but powerful things that just help you look at life a bit from a new perspective. Whether it's which river you're crossing, which mountain you're climbing, what you're hunting, protecting, and growing. And so we have some of these concepts and metaphors on offer. And those of you who are coaches know the power of metaphors. There's something special about that and, and working with them to reflect on your life. And so, you know, as my as the previous speakers have been saying, this is also about connection with yourself, maybe most of all. And the more you connect with, with yourself, the more you can connect with others, usually. And so it's, uh, yeah, I'm excited to to offer that and to to explain those and to work with them on you uh, work with you on them and improve them and uh, and, uh, and and find you um, uh, these conversations and the learnings and make it bigger and uh, and better and share it wherever we can so we have that on offer. We call it a masterclass. It's a CPD accredited as well. So that might be interesting for, for some of you. So just wanted to mention that. And um, yeah, perhaps some more uh, logistics and, and details like that, Anthony, uh, from you. I think so. I think it'd be let, let people ask, ask some questions. I think it would be yeah. great. And then I can talk about the tents and the, the actual details of, of where and how and what. But Valerie can, I think, testify that we get you there. <laughs> There's lots of water and, uh, and food and things. Right, Valerie? Yes, absolutely. Um, I don't know that I'd use the word comfortable in the sense that we're used to um, creature comforts in, in this part of the world, in the Western world. Um, your soul will certainly be more comfortable, I would say. <laughs> But everything that you need is there and available. And um and you know, my experience it was that there was there was nothing to complain or be concerned about. Everything everything that you needed was was available. You were fed and watered and and given this wonderful experience of, of just connecting. Any thoughts or comments from people? Jackie, is it? Hello, and thank you. I, I'm just taking it all in. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it feels very comfortable. <laughs> so thank you. I haven't got any questions at the moment. Okay. Any other thoughts or questions from Orlando or from Ruben? Just Jan? Yeah, I, I, I think like Jackie, yeah. Taking it in, excited, uh, anxiety at the same time, but but I think it's gonna be great. Uh, the fact that we're gonna be fed, I think, gives me some comfort as well. It's <laughs> yeah. gonna be, gonna be different type of food as well. So it's gonna be an interesting experience, I think. Uh, being being amongst such great minds and learning as well, something completely different than what I've experienced. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and to be honest, the food is good. I mean, it's spaghetti, it's meatballs, it's cereals in the morning, lots of toast, uh, you know, wine or beer in the evening, um, sitting around the fire. I mean, the main thing is to make it as comfortable as possible for people to have an experience without it being too luxurious, which, in my opinion, completely removes the soul uh, of, of what we're trying to do. We're trying to get back as much as to have conversations with wise people and 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 make everybody feel comfortable in particular the maasai who we're with because they normally see tourists that they, the tourists never speak to them you know and our whole essence is now we want to learn from you we're here to learn and it takes a long time for people to realize there that we are there to honor their wisdom and it's uh it's not straightforward and it just takes a couple of days which is why i'm saying the length of time in the camp so we can go for different walks with different people, bond with different people, uh, and, and go and stay in their families. There's an opportunity if people want to actually spend a night in a hut in a, with the family. So all of those, all of those things are possible. So, uh, Josiane, yeah. 
I've got, thank you. I've got, thank you for the, the presentation so far. I, I'm quite intrigued about um, Dumi's um, point about Ubuntu and how you bring that into uh, what sounds like a very fluid uh, uh, schedule of events. So, so, Dumi, can you tell us a little bit more about the part you play into these conversations and how, how that brings, how, how that learning is, is passed on? How much time do I have? <laughs> the summary version first. Yeah. Summary version is that what Ubuntu does, it, it holds up mirrors to us to look at ourselves in interaction with others and looking at how I see myself and how I see others in that context, in that space. And Ubuntu is incredible experiential. It's not, it's not a cognitive exercise, intellectual thing you can do out there. It's when you are in interaction, a live encounter with another, what's going on with you. The idea is that uh, as we interact with others, very important for us to, to almost pause our narratives and stories about others and, and really meet others where they are and where we are and know we are who we are with our stories, our conditioning, our programming, our, our perceptions and the lie of history. Whoever wrote it put out certain things, we believe them and we don't. The thing is, we have an opportunity to encounter others where they are, where we are. What David was talking about, it's about dancing with another in the moment. Orlando. Um, yes, thank you. Um, uh, just a very quick introduction. I'm calling from Spain, where I moved only three weeks ago um, from Brazil. Um, I, I'm just curious, um, uh, a quick question, Anthony. Um, uh, I, everything I heard is wonderful and uh, it's very exciting about us learning from the Maasai. Um, uh, I'm just curious from previous experiences, have you recorded or, or have any notion of what they learned from us or, or from whoever participated uh, in those interactions? I, I'm just curious about... No, I, yeah, sorry, there is a point that we really, really, really should have, should have made up. I think, oh, should have, should have addressed... First of all, what do they get from it? And that is an extremely important uh, thing to talk about. What is what is their benefit from it? Well, I can show you photographs. We were there uh, in communities where about 20 children who are now adults have been through scholarships that we have supported them on. Um, to be honest, Eric, where we're going, I haven't actually done very much for his community yet. But we're working on a really exciting carbon uh, capture project, potentially, that we can start trying to work out how we can put money straight into the women's uh, uh, sort of pockets. Uh, so instead of it going through all sorts of middlemen, how can we help them on that? Uh, with David, he's got his uh, legacy program around giving, helping everybody become a mentor. And I think we'll have some great fun in the local school and with the local people talking about that philosophy. So the whole idea of our conversations is is really robust exchange of ideas, of photographs, of families, of what's important. So we really, really want it to go two ways. Uh, and one thing is Eric has been with me in England, so has another friend called Emmanuel. And he says what it does is it gives them a great sense of pride that we're interested in them. Because to some extent, the nomads are perceived to be a little bit like the gypsies. Everybody thinks we're part of the Wabenzi class. We've now got a Mercedes. Therefore, these people still value their cattle. Um, yeah. And you're absolutely right. And, and, and that's really important. And, and obviously, before we go, we'll have a long conversation with Eric. You'll meet some of his community. And we can discuss that and what they get back from that. But maybe Valerie or Doubtson could also. But that's a superb question that we should have put on to. Uh, 
No, Anthony, thank you. But I uh, and and you gave a lot more than I was expected in yeah. terms. Of, my question was a lot more uh, as um, as Duny was explaining Ubuntu. I, I was curious about what what things surface in the interactions from their side. Uh, I'm not I'm I'm not questioning anything else that I'm I'm sure it's wonderful about the scholarships and everything else. Yeah. But I'm just curious um, because uh, Valerie mentioned, you know, it, uh, they're all speak English well. So I, I imagine that conversations are very equal. So I'm just curious for those that have already been there, uh, you know, what, what type of issues uh, surface from their side? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just curious about that. Yeah. Well, Linda, can I, can I, can I make a suggestion? Actually. Yeah. I think that question is best asked or best asked on the ground. Yeah, yeah, Very okay. Yeah. I, I, I was curious about previous experiences. That's, well, that's <coughs> I think Valerie, you you know, I think you had some wonderful conversations and walks in the morning around that. Uh, yeah, I was very curious about what the questions that they they had for us, um, and there was one in particular, and and. The lady that asked it was a little bit hesitant, and she said, "What is it that what's going on with he, she, they, gender? What's that about?" Interesting. Yeah. 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 Um, because that's not something that's as prevalent. I don't know even if it's evident, but but there was a really curiosity about it about how we're evolving and how people are describing themselves as non-binary um, and and all the the spectrum of of identities that people are working with and and I think there I find that there was your identity seemed to be on who you about who you were and from a very young age um you were very aware of the responsibilities that you had and the identity that you had and being part of the the community but also aware of of how things are changing for other people so you know how do they maintain identity and evolve at the same time thank you valerie so these these were some of the, the things that came thank you but, but that is important it is very very important and that's why we want the interaction to be mutual and mutually respectful and that is why you know, the, the, we have they, they sit at the same table with us in the morning or in the evening and sit around the fire with us. So so we can have those sorts of conversations. Maybe, Dowson, would you like to say something on that? Um, yeah, I think what uh, what Valerie ended with would, uh, would would have been what came to mind first for me, that, that part of because of how much uh, the world and, and the climate also changes, it means that their lifestyle from purely nomadic for, for hundreds of years, maybe longer, uh, is changing and has to change. And so that exploration of uh, what's, what makes us still Maasai if we can't be purely nomads anymore, um, and those explorations around uh, maybe sometimes redefining values, I've, I, I've had the impression that for them kind of interacting with us and asking us questions about our lifestyle also again gives them perspective to you know to use in that that redefinition what do we resonate with what don't what seems very what's the direction we do not want to go uh, and um and and yeah and sometimes also very uh, just lovely questions like uh uh, the way you live, what your house is like, and um, uh, and um, just getting a sense of of the different lifestyles that we're having, and and getting an image of that, you know. So it it's it also depends really who you're speaking to, uh, and uh, where yeah. they are in life, and what they're curious about. But it can go in all kinds of directions. I remember being so impressed um, in my time in, in Kenya with the youth who were coming together on a Saturday. I think there were and and teens beginning twenty in that age group who were coming together to explore like the traditional values of of courage, for example. We can't kill lions anymore. It's not allowed to display our courage. 
So how do we how do we do it now to make sure that we still show uh, value of courage to to the community because it's important. It's, uh, so, uh, well, that's more saying about what I learned from them again. But but um, I think that that kind of opportunity for them also to explore uh, our visions on that is again a mutual creation, and um, I think that's that's interesting. Yeah, if I can just throw in a couple that, you know, I remember uh, someone called Dave Green who had just been traveling with me and he was talking to a group of people a couple of days ago about what he, what he learned. He said, yeah, this woman said, could you tell us, why do you put your old people in homes? You know, I mean, <laughs> inconceivable. Why, why would you do this? Uh, they've got the wisdom. Uh, and another lovely one with Nigel Mickelson from London Business School. He's talking to a, a woman and she said, he said, oh, we live in houses and, uh, you know, we don't even know our neighbours. Uh, and which the woman asked him, so how on earth do you build your houses then? Because mm. <laughs> it's just, if you don't work with your neighbours, then you can't have a life. So it, it, it's just this sort of, fascinating conversations and questioning that we want to try to get across to people. Yeah. Thank you all. Mm. So any other questions that anybody yeah. had? I'm can, sure I, can, I hear, can, can you hear me now? Yeah, we we'll hear you loud and clear, sir. Oh, just and popped out i wanted to to check yeah. if she got her answer yeah well i have copied it so i can get i can give it to her okay thank you thank uh, you uncle tony yeah i mean you know it's uh as it you know this is it's not easy to get people to understand what where this wisdom is and why we've forgotten it and how we can bring it back yeah I was, I was listening yesterday to a broadcast about um, uh, about some scientific work to, um, um, tagging animals, uh, particularly um, sharks, uh, tiger sharks, or, 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 um, in the uh, uh, near Bermuda and these uh, uh, millions of, of acres of seagrass. Um, and all this sounds quite random and, and irrelevant, and I'll explain why it's why it's not. Um, but what what they what it's part of a number of global global projects by the United Nations, the American, the, um, the, the, the NASA has one as well. Um, and what they what they're doing is is, is mapping um, animal movements um, ac across the planet. And and then what they what they've started doing is to integrate the mapping of sharks with other other creatures or in, on the land masses. Um, Different, the interaction between different species and and what they're discovering is the interconnectedness of yeah. the ecosystems um yeah. and what and and, and 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 reinforcing a lot of um um uh, what you might call mysticism and i think you know we're not going to go mystic uh in, in, yeah. in, in what we do um but the um the, the um but mysticism comes out out of wonder. How do things connect to each other? And 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 finding that a lot of the intuitive connections that have been made turn out to be quite accurate. Yeah. Um. And so a lot of this is is about what is the what are the intuitive connections we're making through um our um uh through through the conversations that we have the connections we didn't see that were there. Yeah. Um, and you can't plan for. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, I, did, I did a supervision session with a coach yesterday, um, and his point was he's very been very successful, and he's trying to all his life. He just feels too cozy. Yeah. Um, and so what we did was just to get him to talk, to just to open up all the different factors, the things that just came to mind that were perhaps fact, perhaps elements of, of this of this. Um, okay. And uh, what what he did what what he did was to look at the connections between them all. And we spent the entire conversation with him finding the connections between aspects of his life. Yep. And I think that's a good metaphor for some of the things that we'll be doing. Yeah. And comparing the maps and the visions and what's important. So, yeah, absolutely. So, well, thank you all very much.
Yes, thank you for coming. Thank you. I hope you, you enjoyed this. Hope to look uh, to see some of you on the on the trip. Yeah, thank or, you. Uh, on the adventure, as I as I must call it, because it is an adventure. It is an adventure. That it certainly is. Thank you. Yeah.